Hello, this is Kamal with the Elastic Team. This video covers classification. You've already seen in the introduction videos how to do classification in Elastic. In this video we'll discuss what classification is, how it works in Elastic, and some limitations of using classification in Elastic version 0.5. Let's start with a brief description of classification. Classification methods are concerned with assigning one of a discrete set of labels to a set of objects. Now in Elastic, those objects are pixels. In this image, taken from the Cell Center database, we might consider there to be five classes of pixels. First, those pixels that belong to this dark background. Second, those belonging to this green outer membrane. Third, those belonging to this blue inner membrane. Fourth, the pixels in this dark interior region. And finally, the pixels belonging to these small light blue blobs. We'll need to create labels for each of these five classes and mark up a few pixels as examples. But since you've already seen how to do that in the introduction videos, let's save time and skip ahead. Now that we've manually assigned a few pixels to each label, we'd like to automatically label all the other pixels in the image. We can do that by training a classifier, which learns an association between the properties of the pixels and the labels. For instance, we might use the rule that pixels that are blue should be assigned to label 2. In order to provide this information to the classifier, it's not enough to label each pixel. We also need to calculate features for each pixel. So we can click on the Select Features box and choose features from four different groups in a variety of sizes. In the upcoming videos, I'll discuss what each of these feature groups means. For now, let's focus on the size of the features. When the mouse hovers over a column, for instance here, the medium size features, this indicator in the preview window on the right shows how large the window around a pixel is that's used for calculating features at that pixel. So to calculate features for a very small structure like this tiny light blue blob, it might make sense to use one of these tiny or small features. Whereas to identify this larger membrane region, we should use a slightly larger neighborhood. Now I've selected one feature group at four different sizes, which means now there's four pieces of information available at each pixel. This is the information that's provided to the classifier. Let's see if we've provided it with enough information to correctly label the other pixels. I can click on Start Live Prediction, which trains the classifier, and then predicts the labels for the pixels that are visible. This will give us some quick feedback for how well we're doing so far. By turning on the segmentation overlay, I can see hard assignments for each pixel. And the results actually already look pretty good. I can try to improve the results by further labeling more areas of the image. and by selecting more features, if I think they'll be useful. Now let's zoom out and look for areas where the classifier is still uncertain. We can invert the visible overlays by hitting the spacebar. And now the red regions are where the classifier is most uncertain. Let's zoom in on one of these regions and provide it with some more labels to improve its predictions. It looks like it's most confused around boundaries, so let's label some more of these green pixels and some more of the background. It looks better along the boundary there. And now let's try to fix the boundary between the green and the blue membranes. That didn't help as much. But since we're only doing this for demonstration purposes, I won't waste too much time trying to get everything perfect. Let's see how that looks. Still some confusion along the boundaries, but let's assume that we're happy with these results for now. Now we've trained our classifier on the labeled data, and we can see what it predicts for the remaining pixels. The classifier that we're using here is called a random forest. We can see the classifiers that are available by clicking on the classifier options button. And we can see that Elastic has two classifiers available, the random forest and a random forest with variable importance. We'll not cover this variable importance version in this video. That's a subject for a more advanced video. 
But the random forest classifier has one setting. We can increase or decrease this parameter, the number of trees. The fewer trees there are, the faster the predictions, but the more variance there will be in the results. So each time we hit start and stop live prediction, the classifier is retrained and then new labels are assigned to each pixel. And notice how many of the pixels are changing each time I redo this classification. Now if instead of using the minimum number of trees I use the maximum number of trees, training and prediction will take much longer, but the results should be more consistent. Now that you've seen what Elastic can do, let's discuss some of its limitations. This pixel level classification cannot be used for identifying different objects of the same class. For instance, I couldn't label two people's faces with two different labels and expect this kind of classifier to identify those people in new pictures. At the pixel level, all faces look the same. In this video I've described how classification works in Elastic, what features mean, and why you might want to choose features of different sizes, and some of the limitations of pixel level classification using Elastic. Thanks for watching.